Okay, so in this random box I found, which uh, I thought was a pretty cool box to use, um, is a jewel ringer circuit. Um, I don't know where people are with these circuits today. Um, it's been a while since I messed with them. Um, but I basically took an older one that I had laying around that I think I ended up frying the transistor on some kind of way <clears throat> and um, I wanted to remake it um, so I had rewound the core and um, basically my coils were uh, the same thing I used before which was a yoke from a TV and it was uh, it was half of the yoke so it was like the trumpet shape uh, ferrite but half of that and um, <clears throat> I had about 400 wines of 30 gauge and about 40 wines, roughly 40 of a uh, larger gauge. But I ended up using speaker wire uh, for this guy. But this guy right here is he's hooked up to, um, uh, let's see, 1.5 volts. And um, I thought it was pretty cool that it will, it will actually run off of uh, a double A or a triple A. It'll just barely oscillate from one and a half volts. Or that is to say, it'll just barely uh, light this up. Which, um, at that brightness, is pretty much just a night light. So you're not really, you're not going to get a whole lot of use um, out of something that's this brightness. But it's still, um, for a double A, that's not bad. So, what I'm going to do is, let's see, unhook that. Now I'm going to run it from <clears throat> about three and a half volts. So this is a, this is an 18350 cell. It is it is a little bit larger than half of one of these uh, 18 650 cells Man, the camera doesn't want to focus anyway that's an 18 650 cell common cell and uh, flashlights vaporizer stuff like that so I'm gonna hook up this one and you can see it's decently bright. You see I got a little meter in there. It's just one of those little cheap uh, $2 meters. I got a few of those to use for these little vape e-cig guys. But I uh, thought that was pretty cool. Put that in line with it just so you can see the running voltage on it. And um, you can see where it <clears throat> about 3.3 loaded. It's not fully charged. Sitting at about 3.6. But um, I get pretty good brightness from that. Um, it's kind of hard to see camera, but uh, yeah, that's not bad for three and a half volts. I can live with it. But <clears throat> let me see. Preferably, I would run it from one of these guys. The uh, about about the same voltage, roughly. This one's uh, almost fully charged. I'd run it from one of those, and that's something that you could easily put. Uh, maybe several in here if you wanted to you can get by with just uh, one and have it rechargeable that would be the next thing for me to do with this guy I would go ahead and probably while that is pretty bright right there what I would do with this is probably the two 18650s in series probably 
probably limit it to two of them. And the reason I say that is because I wouldn't want to overwork that transistor. So one thing I noticed about this guy was while well, I also ran great from 12 volts, um, see if I can hook this up. Uh, wants to be a bitch. All right, let me do this. All right, that's <clears throat> humming consistently, so that's a good connection. So we're pulling some decent current. As you can see, I can't show you the current because um, in the process of winding these coils, when I got to the point where I found it to be the most efficient as far as my wire, the windings were concerned, it stopped giving me consistent meter readings <clears throat> it started jumping around and it would give me some out of whack numbers so I, it's pointless for me to show you that you pretty much have to go by what you see in the voltage drop here but <clears throat> I would say um, pulling a decent amount of current uh, I want to say it's no more than an amp. I think it's actually a little less than that. Um, because when I run it from 12 volts, uh, the transistor does not get as hot as it would, um, as it should if it was, you know, a good amount over an amp. <clears throat> I would say it, judging by the heat, it's, it can't be more than an amp. But at any rate, um, running this from 12 volts makes it really bright. <clears throat> Cut this light off here. Running it from 12 volts um, makes it really bright. But I feel like it overworks the transistor. And as you can see down here, <clears throat> I've got a little neon that is illuminating. See when I cut the circuit on and off, I put the load in and off, you can see that comes on. That's not just residual light bouncing around. The neon is actually lit a little bit. So there's basically some um, high voltage still going on between the collector and the emitter. And um, at 12 volts, it's, there's actually a, it's actually a lot stronger. <clears throat> but uh, basically, that's what is burning out the transistors here. Uh, maybe some people are running too many amps through them uh, by hooking up crazy powerful batteries and whatnot. But for me, it's always been the high voltage um, because I can... I can use a, a 12 volt 1 amp adapter and run it through a 2 amp fuse and um, fuse will be totally fine. I could use a 1 amp fuse probably and um, that fuse will not pop in this circuit. However from numerous on and off switching and uh, continuous run times I burned out a uh, 2N3055, the big body, and uh, another TIP3055. Right now I've got an MJE3055 in there. And I don't really want to run it from 12 volts because I'm afraid it might, it might damage it. But this is why I've got that neon on there. And I've got another neon actually in parallel on the inside that you can't see. And I've got two diodes across my basin emitter anode toward the base. And this connection is no good, so I'll just switch it over to the single battery here. But um, basically, 
um, what I had going on here with my windings was I had the, the trumpet core and then I had about 400 windings of 30 gauge on the inside and then I put about 40 windings of speaker hookup wire and I kept adding turns and adding turns and the more turns of this thicker primary I added the more the current went up and the higher the brightness got of my load which was a little counterintuitive I thought it would have been the other way around but that's how this worked and um, it's it's fat uh, speaker hookup wire and it's stranded wire and um, I, I, I stripped it down the middle so I didn't have uh, if it wasn't by father wound like how speaker wire comes it was just a single strand <clears throat> single wire rather stranded um and um i believe it, it was like somewhere around 10 or 12 gauge around that size um but um or excuse me uh about 14 or 16 gauge around that size but i basically kept adding turns adding turns adding turns until the, it got to the point where i felt like it just wasn't going to get any brighter. And um, once I got to that point, I started backing down on the turns a little bit, just trying to reduce the current. And I got to the point where um, I liked the brightness, but then my meter was kind of wigging out and it wasn't giving me... Um, comprehensive readings anymore and this was around the point where I was drawing roughly um, an amp or so from 12 volt from a 12 volt battery so judging from that that's how I get an idea of my current uh, intake also basically just from the voltage drop that I see come from a cell and what I know that cell can it can usually put out so you can see judging from how quickly the voltage drops over time and the instantaneous drop from unloaded to loaded um, you can sort of get a rough idea of what's going on um, but anyway uh, what what I would ultimately do is probably while this is pretty bright in itself um, I would have maybe a setup where my low could just be running from one single and my high could be running from two in series and I would just have a switch going back and forth between the two. Uh, of course then it would get a little more complicated adding the charging aspect but that would you know that can be done. I think that would be a good idea um, but at any rate just a cool little box like this. Um, I mean, I, I would open it up and show it, but um, just a little too complicated to do right now with two hands, but I basically just got the core. Well, matter of fact, I might as well, just to show what's going on in here, see if I can. All right, so this is the inside of this guy. <clears throat> Basically, just you see, got a little meter switch, a couple neons, 3055. I've got a couple diodes in parallel. I believe they're uh, 4000 ones, and they're across the base and emitter. You can see the cathode towards the base. That's the speaker hookup wire I've used. You see, I've just got it sloppily wrapped on. And you see the shape, that's the trumpet, the trumpet shape of my core. There, just got a little spacer in there. Uh, keep it kind of in there snug, but that's all that is. Um, so. Very simple. So you can see, I can put a battery or two in there, which is what I plan on doing, and then maybe an additional uh, charging circuit 
for the batteries. Um, that seems to me like it would be the best thing to do. Um, now when it comes to these kinds of lighting circuits, um, to me, that was always the name of the game. That was always something I've really been into hardcore. What What is the most um, efficient light that I can get? Now, just for example, you can see uh, the practical brightness I got from this, which I feel like is a cool little thing to have. But nowadays, we've got these power LEDs. This is just happens to be a, a cheapo LED um, that I got from some random flashlight. But, but, but these power LEDs are where it's at. And <clears throat> the reason I don't use these kinds of crazy circuits so much anymore, play with them so much, is because nowadays uh, you can get like a Cree LED, like this guy that's in here that I put in. Um, that for around 10, 10 watts, you can get about a thousand lumens. All right. So with, with one of these 18, six fifties, you can get, um, some ridiculously bright light, um, these for your lumens per watt efficiency I, I just feel like you just can't beat it with with something like this so that's the thing about it however I'm still highly interested in these kind of circuits and um, like I say I don't know where other people are at nowadays with them I thought that was pretty interesting um, I know other people are lighting whole strings of bulbs but this was this is right here is 800 lumens 10 and a half watts and um yeah i thought that was pretty cool it's just i wouldn't i wouldn't use fluorescence in this just because they uh draw a little more current and i haven't been able to have um any practical use from an incandescent in here because the incandescent would just barely light at all and um i just <clears throat> the thing about these circuits is you they're as as simple as as and cool as it is um i mean you're essentially it's it's not quite self regulating it's it's like some people think it's just just more like self oscillating um you know you put your load in depending on the resistance of your load it's how hard your your oscillations are driven and um that's that 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 pretty much just means that uh, depending on your specific bulbs and the resistance in the bulb circuit and da 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 da. I mean, you're gonna have different efficiencies. It's it's not like you have one uh, one simple circuit you can throw together and all of a sudden it's just more efficient no matter what you put in you know, kind of bulb you put in. It doesn't work that way. Uh, but overall, it's it's still a pretty cool circuit and. I keep it around and use it. <clears throat>